these are the best tips and tricks to help you pass your next cybersecurity certification. So for anyone who is currently studying for a cybersecurity certification out there, I know there is a lot of information online and articles and blog posts, which is why I wanted to make this video to be able to provide you those best practices to pass your certification. A lot of these tips and resources are also the ones that I use personally to pass my CompTIA Security Plus certification. And that certification was definitely one of the most important factors in me being able to grow my career as well as find other roles in cybersecurity. So with that, let's just get into the video. The number one thing I wanted to discuss is to make sure that you're picking a certification that aligns with your career goals. So I know there's many, many cybersecurity certifications out there, whether it's for entry-level roles, auditing, pen testing, digital forensics, and probably most other roles in cybersecurity. There's going to be a certification out there. So whether you already started studying for your certification or not, it's likely going to be a long study process. So you definitely want to make sure that you're studying for the right certification for your career. For example, if you're someone who is entry-level, then you're likely going to be looking for a certification like the Security Plus or the GSEC or even the A Plus if you're someone who is a bit more beginner in cybersecurity, or maybe you want to go into specific networking and in that case you might try to take the network plus and you likely won't be taking a certification like the CISSP but that may be a certification that you want to go for later on in your career. The second thing I wanted to touch on is practice exams. So this is something that I think is very very important to add as part of your studying strategy because even if you were to read a textbook let's say front to back and maybe you memorize all the information if you don't have experience applying that information to an actual question or a problem then it'll be a lot harder for you to recall that information or know when the best use cases are for whatever protocol or security tool or concept. Personally, when I was studying for my CompTIA Security Plus, I would say for about the whole month before I took the exam, by then I had already read up on all the material. Now it was really just time for me to get experience understanding the types of questions and the format of the questions from the exam. And there are many official practice questions and practice exams out there that you can use. And those helped me so much to prepare for my certification because not only did I have to apply the information that I learned, but I also got an idea of what the wording was like, what the structures of the questions look like. For example, depending on the certification that you're taking, there may be multiple choice questions, but there may also be some kind of performance-based questions, or there may be questions that are interactive. We have to enter text or move things around. So it really all depends on the certification that you're taking. But I would just make sure that you know the format of all those questions and also the structure and the wording of them. Just getting used to them and seeing them, answering a few hundred of those before you get to the official exam really does wonders. And I do think that that's one of the biggest reasons why I was able to pass on my first try taking my Security Plus exam because if you're first seeing those types of questions for the first time, it really is like taking the SAT. The questions are worded a certain way, they're in a specific format, and you just want to make sure that you don't have any surprises. Otherwise, the countdown timer can really get in your head and it can feel like it's over before you even finish the exam. So always, always make sure you're taking some form of practice questions. Me personally, I probably took about four practice exams before I took the official exam. And this was through practice exam booklets I used because I know some certifications do provide practice exams that may cost extra on top of your certification exam voucher. And when I was studying for my Security Plus, I was also using a textbook, the Security Plus all-in-one textbook. So in that textbook, there was also about 20 or so practice questions, 15 to 20 after each chapter that you read or each section that you read. So altogether, I probably took probably more than 500 practice questions in general, just to give you an idea of how many practice practice questions helps me because for example, practice questions can also help you see the gaps in the knowledge areas that you may not be as clear on or may have knowledge gaps. For example, if I was reading a specific section and, and there's two questions I got wrong in a specific area, let's say network protocols, which is no surprise because that definitely isn't one of my strength areas, but just knowing that or getting stuck on a question can help you realize, oh, okay, I need to really brush up on my network ports and protocols and make sure I have those actually in my head before the certification exam. And of course, this leads me directly into our next topic, which is choosing the right study material. And I'm so excited to be working with O'Reilly on this video. So I've talked about O'Reilly before on my video on how I actually passed my CompTIA Security Plus certification. I personally use their resources to help me study and pass my exam. And if you're not familiar with O'Reilly, they are an online learning provider with live online training courses, books, videos. When I was studying for my Security Plus, I personally used their CompTIA course by Sari Green. And of course, my holy grail CompTIA textbook, which is the CompTIA Security Plus all-in-one exam guide, practice exams, and complete courses. All these resources resources can be found on O'Reilly. For anyone who is learning something online, O'Reilly is one of the best resources for you. And of course, one of the best things is on their courses. I personally use O'Reilly for a lot of my certification studying. So I actually have playlists of these certifications that I am interested in. And for example, my Security Plus, if you guys are interested, I know this is a very popular certification for many people who are starting their cybersecurity careers. These are some of the best resources that you can get on studying for your exam. And of course, I have many 
different practice exams on here because again that is a huge thing for me when i am studying for certifications because i like to know the actual language that the exam is using in terms of how they format their questions so i love practice exams and o'reilly has so many of those resources and of course for other certifications that i'm looking to study for my cissp and the pentest plus these playlists are a perfect way to add everything in one place not only does o'reilly have resources on certifications but they also have courses so you can find different courses based on the roles in tech that you're interested in for example if you're someone who is interested in cybersecurity i would likely go for the cybersecurity engineering role and here you'll find a list of many of the best cybersecurity courses out there that you can find whether you're studying for your CISA or if you're studying for a Cisco certification whether you're looking for a course on general encryption AWS cloud security cyber prevention and detection even foundational knowledge like the OS top 10 as well as I am basically any kind of cybersecurity topic that you're interested in learning O'Reilly likely has a course on that content so as you can see I am a huge fan of O'Reilly and personally it's helped me so much in my career helping me pass my certification and I I really think it's one of the best learning resources out there for cybersecurity professionals and of course in other areas of tech especially as someone who has used their platform for many years now so if you guys are interested in checking out o'reilly and all of their amazing courses especially for cybersecurity certifications i would definitely check them out they are linked in the description thank you so much to o'reilly for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the video all right so now that you've ensured that you're taking the right cybersecurity certification for your career know what study material that you're going to use as well as your practice exams that you're going to use. The next step is to pick a reasonable exam date and to create your study schedule around it. So I know not everyone is going to be able to drop everything in their life and be able to spend one to two months studying for their certification. People have full-time jobs, people have part-time jobs, people have family and school obligations that they have to attend to. So when you're deciding what the date is for your certification exam, you definitely want to be as realistic as possible. Personally for me, I probably studied for a period of about four months. In the first half of that studying, I was very much just lightly studying. I was doing my passive learning. So I was watching my overly courses, I was reading the textbook. I literally read that textbook, the Security Plus All-in-One front to back. That was the first textbook I've ever read, probably since probably since ever that I was actually able to read the entire thing I stuck to about 20 pages per day and I was really lucky that I was able to use that I was able to use some of my personal development time at work to study for my certification exam and that was when I was able to cram those 20 pages a day and if I skipped a day I would pile it on to the next day so so I was trying to be as strategic as possible with my studying because I knew I wanted to take my exam by a certain date but obviously I didn't schedule my exam for a month or two after I started studying because I knew that wouldn't be realistic even though it sounds like a long time two months really isn't a long time to study for a certification if you go to school full-time if you work full-time if you have full-time family obligations studying for a certification if you don't already have that background knowledge which definitely was the case when i was in my early career and while i did feel knowledgeable in some areas of cybersecurity, i definitely wasn't knowledgeable in every area that the security plus covered so for the first two months or basically the first half of my entire studying phase of my security plus i was focusing on courses and the textbook and of course taking notes. For the textbook itself, on the weekends, I try to read as many pages as possible, especially if one week work was very busy and I wasn't able to get through the pages I wanted to. My weekends were basically dedicated to studying. So from there, the second half of my studying, after I finished the textbook, I went through all of the notes that I took, I read through them, and I went through all the practice questions in the all-in-one textbook again, especially with the questions I got wrong, which I highlighted in my notes. I went back to them and tried to see if I was able to answer them now, especially for topics I may have covered in the beginning of the textbook that may not be as recent in my memory and after that from there I was all practice exams so like I mentioned before practice exams were my best friend while studying for my certification because you can study and cram and read through the same notes over and over but you really don't know what you don't know until you start doing these 100 question practice exams they really are a great place to learn and don't forget to use various different sources for your practice exams personally like you saw i probably use about three or four different resources that had different practice questions because on one textbook i may have gotten an 80 percent for a practice exam that i took which is a passing grade but on another exam i actually got a 64 percent the first time i took it so that is not a passing score so you definitely want to diversify the practice exams that you take because some of them may have questions that are more direct and some may have questions that 
are a little bit more complex or you have to read into the question a little bit more than a more surface level question which is why you want to make sure you have practice exams from different exam practice booklets so probably for the whole month before i studied for my comp tea security plus I was all about practice exams. I was probably answering at least 50 questions plus a day on the days where I actually took a mock exam, which is which is just me timing myself and just acting like it was a real exam that I was taking. Those are the ones that really set the pressure because it helps you answer questions in a certain amount of time. So I know I'm talking about the Security Plus a lot because that's personally the entry level certification that I took. But I do think regardless, whatever certification that you're taking, these tips will still be helpful because I really do believe in the power of practice questions. And now going into hands-on practice for your exam. So the most hands-on that a entry-level certification like the Security Plus will get is going to be their interactive questions. For example, they may show you some kind of diagram of network traffic or some kind of configuration. And you might have to adjust certain settings. You might have to change certain configurations. And those are going to be the interactive questions that you're going to get. Those are, again, applied knowledge questions. So that's why I think practice exams are really helpful. Many of them primarily cover the multiple choice questions, but there are platforms out there that kind of give you an idea of, of the types of interactive questions that you'll get for your security plus but for example let's say you're taking a certification like the oscp which is the offensive security certified professional certification that is a very popular one for red teamers and ethical hackers and that certification is very much hands-on. You're basically doing an entire red team assessment, breaking into different boxes, writing down all your steps and your notes, and then actually submitting a report of everything that you did to be able to pass that certification. So specifically for the OSCP, they do have a platform where you're able to do that hands-on training to prepare for the exam. While I personally am not at that level yet to take a certification like the OSCP, one of my previous mentors did take and pass their OSCP, and they spent most of their time doing that hands-on training, which is going to be very different from the Security Plus, where most of your studying is done from reading a textbook or taking courses, the OSCP, you're likely going to need that hands-on practice, that hands-on training before you take the certification. So just make sure you know the balance of what to study and prepare for the most for the specific certification that you're taking. And of course, based on the actual material that is going to be tested on the exam. And lastly, I just wanted to cover some tips and tricks for note-taking while you're studying for your certs. The first thing is when you're taking your practice exams, always keep track of what questions that you're getting wrong. So you're able to go back to them before the exam, after you've completed studying, so that you're able to double check that you have that knowledge down. For example, if there's a specific section where maybe I got less than a 70% on the practice question, then I'll start that section down on paper or digitally, wherever you prefer to take your notes and be able to go back to that page in the textbook or go back to that page in a practice exam to be able to retake it and see if there's any other gaps after you've restudied that material. It's not all about memorization, but a big part of it is knowing the material itself. So you just want to make sure you have at least the materials down to then be able to go and re-answer any practice questions that you got wrong. Another thing is of course highlighting certain things that may not stick in your head the first time. For example, two things that I remember that I had to read a few times over from my Security Plus textbook were the network ports and protocols, which were things I really had to study and really put into my memory before my exam, as well as for example, Kerberos. Remembering all the different steps, remembering all the entities that are part of that authentication process, those steps and all the different concepts that are involved in there as well as SSL certs and certain hashing algorithms or whether an algorithm is a hashing algorithm versus an encryption algorithm, knowing their names, knowing how secure they are, knowing if they're deprecated and suddenly it's all coming back to me. But yeah, you kind of get the idea. So basically there might be topics that may not click the first time you read them. Just make sure that you have them highlighted so you're able to go back to them and make sure that you have them hammered down before you officially get into your certification exam. Some topics are just easier to remember for certain people compared to others and those are the topics that I'll be studying and restudying before my certification compared to the topics that are easier for me. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and, and hope that they help prepare you for whatever cybersecurity certification that you're studying for. Don't forget to check out O'Reilly linked in the description. They're an awesome resource, especially for cybersecurity certifications and continuous learning. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.